two months from right now, Big East Hoops is back. And isn't that a way for you to cool off from the early September heat wave that seems like it's never going to end? We're here to cool you off. Big East Shoot Around is with you live from New York City. John Fanta here to give you all the storylines. And think about that, folks. November 6th is when college basketball is going to return. We're two months out. Here's what we've got coming up. Two of the best returnees in the conference. Marquette Sam Hauser. He talks about his hip injury and then previews a loaded Golden Eagle season. Villanova's Eric Paschal will talk about leading the reigning national champions. We've got birthdays. Butler's Paul Jorgensen just hitting threes on threes. And even former NBA commissioner David Stern. That's right. David Stern is on the show today. Now that is a loaded slate. But we begin with the Marquette Golden Eagles, who are absolutely stacked heading into this season. And we begin with their sharpshooter, Sam Hauser. He gives us an update on MUBB. The Marquette Golden Eagles are loaded for this upcoming season, and one of their stars is Sam Hauser, who joins us on Shoot Around. Sam, I have to start with this. Your younger brother, Joey, now coming into the program. So did you have to move him into his dorm room and take him to <laughs> lunch, do all those things? Oh, of course, the typical freshman stuff. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's great to have him on campus, and uh, I can't wait to play with him again, just like the high school days. So uh, he's looking really well, and he's doing well. He's 100% finally, so uh, I think he's very excited to get going with the season, and so are we. Coach Wojciechowski told me earlier this summer he feels that this is really the best all-around group that he's had thus far at Marquette. What makes you think that that's true? I, I believe that too. I think just with our depth and our versatility and what we have returning from last year, uh, we, you know, we only lost Andrew Rossi. Obviously, he's a big part of what we did last year, but you know, we, we return a lot of experience, and I think that's really going to vote well for us this year. What do you and Marcus Howard like to do for fun? <laughs> yeah, I like to play video games, uh, just chill. We kind of just lay low. I mean... Nothing too, nothing major. Just kind of keep it pretty low key and like talk about things. Just, and what, just game? Kind of chill. what game? What uh, game? We like to play 2K. Who's got yeah. the edge in that series right now? <laughs> it's pretty dead even right now. I think it's 4-4, four, 5-5, four, five, five, something like that. Who are you typically? Uh, we do randoms, so it really shows your, uh, shows your true ability. So. Well, well, speaking of that, NBA 2K, who do you like to mimic your game after? Uh, I've always kind of liked Gordon Hayward. Uh, I've, I've always really liked his game and what he brings to the table. He's very versatile. He can shoot it. He can put it on the floor. He can finish at the rim. And, you know, I, I just like the way he plays in general. Looking at this upcoming year and with what you guys have back, how much do you think it's important now? Coach Wojo told me last offseason as well that you guys were still so young your first couple of years at Marquette, to now be old in the Big East, how important is experience to this league? Right, I think it's it's very important. I mean, once you go through a season of the Big East, you understand how grueling and competitive it is every day, every day and every game night. I mean, there's no days off. And, you know, once you experience that once, you kind of know what to expect the next time uh, in the next season going in. So, I mean, this year, we obviously were young last year with four freshmen. Me and Marcus were sophomores. Sakar Annam was a redshirt sophomore. Um, I think bringing – and Matt Hell, obviously, is still on the team. So, bringing everyone back and understanding what it takes to compete in the Big East is really going to help us. Is Matt Hell like 32? <laughs> he is one of those guys that seems like he's been around forever, isn't he? Yeah, I always – I'm a big – well, not a big, uh, but I'm from Cleveland, so I would watch Ohio State growing up, and John yeah, Dingler yeah. was there for like 12 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, those, those <laughs> I think guys. of Aaron Kraft, too. Aaron Kraft, exactly, yeah. those types of guys. And Marquette's had them as well. We, we do have right. some fan questions, and the big one that I'd like to know as well is, how's the five serve forum? <laughs> it's everything it's hyped up to be. We actually had an open house there last, uh, last week, I think on Thursday. Uh, just all the Marquette fans trying to get their 
season tickets all squared away and we got to tour the whole building so everything looks unbelievable and it, it's pretty top notch let's turn to you what's the latest health status for you where are you at with everything i'm doing well i'm almost back to 100 uh, percent by the end of or pretty much first day of practice i'll be good to go uh, and working my way back into things uh, right now it's just a lot of individual work with uh with the coach and myself so just trying to get my conditioning back and um, obviously get a feel for the ball back. I was talking to Fox Sports insider Evan Daniels last week, and he said a lot of people might be overlooking Brendan Bailey. He was on a Mormon mission the last couple of years. Right. Be a freshman for you guys this year, six foot eight, certainly lengthy. What does he bring to the table? He brings a lot. Um, he's very athletic. He's he's kind of almost sneaky athletic in a way. But, I mean, he can really shoot it, he can space the floor, he can play multiple positions, he can guard multiple positions. And, I mean, he's he's already 21 years old, so, you know, he's old and he kind of understands what needs to be done to be able to get or earn his minutes and help the team in general. So, I think he's really going to help us this year. What's the biggest difference between you and your brother, Joey? <laughs> um, I mean... There's not much of a difference, but I think when you see us play, there's a little bit of a difference in how we play. I think, you know, he likes to go down low on the post a little bit more than I do. Um, I like to space the floor a little bit more. I, uh, I can shoot a little better than him. I'm sure he'll love hearing that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, th there's not much different about our games, but, the, I mean, if you really look into it, there's I mean, things here and there that are a little different. You know, there was a Big East coaches conference call last year. The coaches have to come on every two weeks. They talk yeah. to the media. And Seton Hall's Kevin Willer was asked, what makes Marcus Howard so good? And he said Sam Hauser because you can't leave Sam Hauser open. So the 52-point game is pretty good, and, and Marcus <laughs> Howard is a Big East player of the year candidate. Yeah. I know Marquette fans believe you are too, but I think, uh, I think Marcus Howard owes some credit here. <laughs> well, I mean – I mean, he's a great player. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from him. He's unbelievable. Sam, take it away. I'm not taking it away from him, no. <laughs> he deserves every ounce of credit he can get. So, I mean, he's a great player. He can really score the ball. And, you know, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just doing my job. If it's to space the floor and open up things for him, I'll do that. And if, vice versa. Another addition you guys make is Nebraska transfer Ed Morrow. What yeah. comes to mind when you think of his game? Yeah, he's very physical, uh, he's very strong, and he brings a different type of presence that we haven't had the last couple of years, and I think it's just a sort of a bruiser down low that can get to wherever he wants, whenever he wants, and can really rebound the ball. This group's depth, at least on paper, it looks like it's off the charts. Seems like Coach Wojo's going to have a, a good problem to have with all the options you guys have. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I mean, we have... Pretty much everyone on our roster is competing for minutes, and I, you can't take it lightly. I mean, as a coach, it's a good problem to have because, you know, if if one guy's struggling a little bit, you have someone to turn to to go in and get some minutes and maybe boost the team up in a different way that they did. But, I mean, we'll see what happens with the year. I think everybody deserves to play, and I think, I mean, I think that'll show. We're going to go rapid fire here. Favorite food? <laughs> Steak. I like that. That's mm -hmm. that's what we call coming in hot. Favorite music? Ooh, I'd say like hip hop, R and B type. Yeah. Uh, did you do a Kiki challenge? Absolutely not. I'm not much of a dancer. <laughs> that's, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, yeah, favorite yeah. movie? Ooh, pretty much anything with Will Ferrell. I like that. What what are you? What do you what do you like? Step Brothers, Talladega Nights, you know, the classics, semi-pro. I, I, like yeah. I like old school. That's a good one, too. <laughs> Shake and Bake with Sam Hauser, right? There it is. <laughs> Sam, good luck this upcoming year. Always appreciate, appreciate the time. It. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Coach Wojciechowski has talked about it. you got to get old to have success in the Big East. Well, now... Sam Hauser and Marcus Howard, both juniors, and with the core that Marquette has, you heard him say it, Big East Hoops fans, and I believe it. Everybody's competing for minutes on that roster. They are loaded, they're deep, 
that look like a preseason top 25 caliber team. Let's hit the fast break. And we've got different news and notes around the conference this week. I'm really intrigued by he got game. Marcus Howard's got game. We're staying on the Marquette train. Boom! You know, for his three-point shooting, as a freshman, he led the country in three-point percentage. But how about this? Kid's got hops. He was sending it to his brother, Jordan. Jordan, challenge. Challenge being sent out from Milwaukee. It's time for Polly Jorgs at Hinkle Fieldhouse. Don't you love seeing Hinkle Fieldhouse with the sunlight coming in? Paul Jorgensen just knocking him down left and right. That win over Villanova for Butler last January, that was amazing. Jorgensen hitting one from basically the Bulldog. Fiserv Forum, part of our new digs. Marquette touring the brand new arena in Milwaukee, a basketball first facility. Obviously, it'll host the Bucks and the Golden Eagles. Their fans getting the tour as well. Look at the locker room, folks. Come on. And then the Ruane Fryer Development Center. Well, they're going to have their grand opening later this month. And the guys back from Spain, uh, rather Italy, and working out. Providence practicing, getting some good work in. Happy birthday to Bob Driscoll, by the way. And happy birthday to John Thompson, Jr. A big happy birthday to the legend. And now he's watching his former player, Patrick Ewing. Coach up the Hoyas, looking to turn the corner and get the Hoyas back to the heights that Big John once took the Hoyas to. Happy birthday to John Thompson, Jr. Well, we've got a very, very special guest that was in the Big East office last week. You just never know who you're going to see. Former NBA Commissioner David Stern, he hired Val Ackerman to the NBA, and then the rest is history. Val founded the WNBA, and now she's the commissioner here at the Big East Conference. And I asked David about his first encounter with Val. This is quite the story. She came in to be interviewed and said, oh, I'm going to work for the NBA. And if I can't work for the NBA, I'm not going to take any other job. Okay, young lady. <laughs> and so we gave her a job. She said, you work for the NBA. And what can you say about what she did in being the founder of the WNBA? Well, you know, I, I, had, to, I had to lose something to have her be the founder because she was writing my speeches and, and keeping me <laughs> honest as commissioner, but uh, she was a proponent of the women's game, and she was a force, a force and a forceful proponent of all things about the WNBA. And it's as though she practically willed it into existence, and she did everything, and I do mean everything, from staffing it to selling it uh, with our teams, with our sponsors, with our licensees. Uh, we had some really interesting uh, times together doing that. Now she's the commissioner of the Big East, so she deals with tons of student athletes at the college level. I wanted to ask you, if you had advice for a college player right now, college basketball player that's aspiring to play professionally in the year 2018, what would that advice be? Wow. My advice would be focus on your studies as well as your basketball because you're going to live a very long time, and basketball is only going to be a certain segment of that life. So you better look at life and develop life skills as well as your basketball skills. You can catch the full interview on at Big East MBB on Twitter later on. We'll have that for you as well as the Big East YouTube page too. We turn to the Villanova Wildcats, the reigning national champions. And one thing that's known is that Eric Paschal and Phil Booth are going to lead the Cats this upcoming year. It's on them to try to carry through. Villanova will make some additions, but how about Eric Paschal? And let's look at what he did last year. I think about that great performance against Kansas. We'll get to that in a moment. But the Fordham transfer came in and launched right into Jay Wright's system. He stretches the floor well. The pull-up shot is there. We know he's got the hops, folks. Whether he's slamming it like he did, down in San Antonio, or on the go as well. He's got ball handling skills. This is one of the most athletic players that you're going to find in the country, and one of the most versatile, because he plays the four, he can handle the ball, 
He can stretch it with the three, and he gets up with defense too. It's the perfect power forward on your roster. Such a versatile player as we watch Eric Paschal do his thing, and it's a guy that I expect to be a Big East Player of the Year candidate. That's right, and the Player of the Year has typically gone to the top player from the top team. And until Villanova loses that title, well, Eric Paschal's going to be leading them. He's an exceptional talent, and we caught up with him to preview the Wildcats campaign. For the reigning national champion Villanova Wildcats, it's Eric Paschal. And Eric, what is on your mind heading into this season as now it's really you and Phil leading the charge? Uh, just trying to lead the young guys. I mean, uh, we got a whole new team, five guys, uh, four guys leaving. I mean, just seeing all those guys in the draft doing their thing, uh, it was special for us too. I mean, it meant a lot for us just seeing our teammates, our boys do that. And we have five new guys. So, I mean, we're excited. We're just a brand new journey. You're a Fordham transfer. Could you have envisioned anything better than what you've been through at Villanova? That's uh, honestly, no, uh, no. I mean, just just to be part of this, meet the dudes I met. I mean, Phil, Mikel, O, Jalen, Dante, Colin, Maine, and just everybody part of this team. And then just winning two ta two national championships in three years. I mean, that's that's just a huge blessing. I mean, just just to be able to do that. I, I, I would never think that. I mean, that's every kid's dream growing up. Just. Being able to win a national championship, but two and three years, right. I mean, it's definitely a blessing. What did you see a couple years ago? Because you couldn't play, you were, but you were still so integral in practice and, and in that transfer year. Was there anything that you took from that experience that you then applied to what just happened this past season? Um, I would definitely say attitude. I mean, we use that word a lot, but a lot of, I mean, season's not going to be perfect. I mean, we're going to lose some games, and it's just how you, how you react after that. And we just keeping that attitude throughout the throughout the tournament, not get letting uh, you get distracted. Really, I mean, there's a lot of distractions out there that Final Four, but just just fighting through that as a team and uh, staying together. I mean, just a close knit group means a lot. With what you guys lose and those four NBA draft selections, what makes you think uh, that you guys can put something together here this upcoming year and? achieve that goal of winning another national championship? Um, we just try to be the best Villanova basketball team we can. I mean, just we have a whole bunch of young guys. They're going to have to know, know all our habits and just just doing what we do. I mean, just uh, making sure we have the right guys. I mean, they're all willing to listen. We have a transfer, Joe Cremo, who's an older guy, so he'll be able to get things a little faster. He played college basketball. But, uh, I mean, making sure all the, all the dudes are, are level-headed and making sure we just have a close-knit group. You able to relate with Joe? You know, transfer coming into the yeah, program. Yeah, I mean, I would, it, it's not easy coming into this program. I mean, we have so much that we have to learn, but uh, I mean, he has one year to do it. I've been here three, so he's gonna have to learn a little faster. What are those things you got to learn? Uh, just how we play. I mean, just all everything about Villanova, the culture, all our techniques and stuff like that. If there's something in practice that Coach Wright is always stressing, like that maybe go-to phrase technique, other than attitude, I know that's common. Um. Listening. listening, listening, actually, yeah, just listening to him and making sure you, 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 whatever he says, like you just, you, you take that into mind, process it, and are able to do it. I mean, that, that's a, that's a big part of coming, in, especially coming in as a transfer, just listening, make, trying to make sure you know every little part that uh, he's trying to get to. Who do you mimic your game after? Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I have players that I like, that I like. I try to take like a little something from their game, but. I wouldn't say I mimic anybody. I'll just say, uh, like, I, I, of course I watch LeBron. I mean, he just like everything that he does is, is great. Uh, I even watch people like Paul Millsap, Draymond, uh, those type guys. Just uh, seeing what they do and how they how they uh, perform every day. What's the biggest part of your game that you think people might be a little bit surprised by this upcoming year, or just like, oh, this is something new, an addition to Eric Pascal's game that we'll see this upcoming season? Um, no, I don't know, honestly. I don't know. Stay tuned? Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, just, uh, I try to work on every part of my game. So it's just, uh, I try to just be complete, complete as I can. Yeah, how do I get those hops? You've got, you've got Oh, hops. that just came naturally. <laughs> that just came naturally. And it, just uh, wasn't little, gifted with Yeah, those. and a little more help from uh, Shaq. Shaq helps out a lot in that weight room. Qu quickly off the court, 
let's see here. Uh, if you could go to dinner with anybody, who would it be? Oh, that Past, is Past, present, they could be gone. Oh, uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Uh, I might say LeBron. I just wanted to know, like, he goes through so much due to, like, social media and all those little things, like him leaving Cleveland, like that. He's going through something with that. It's a big. And then uh, him going to Miami, him going back to Cleveland, and just, like, all the criticism he gets is people, some people say he's the best player to ever play. Some people say he's not. So just all that, just knowing, like, how he gets through all that, uh, I would definitely like to know. And no burner accounts. Yeah, no burner accounts. <laughs> no burner accounts of any kind. Uh, your final message to Villanova fans? Uh, attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Pascal, thanks. All right. Attitude is never ending in Philadelphia as the Eagles celebrate their Super Bowl championship from last year. I wonder if Jay Wright will be in the crowd. It's not like uh, he hasn't had a, a great week or anything. If you're a Villanova fan, you know what I'm talking about. It's been uh, a never-ending train for the Villanova Wildcats and Eric Paschal. It's just next man up, next leader up, and he's got all the, the pieces to his game to put together a really special season. Can you believe it, though? College basketball, two months away, and that probably means that you're wondering when the schedule is going to come out, and I've been talking to you about it at the end of every show. I can tell you right now, there is still dark smoke coming from Stu Jackson's office. Dark smoke. We're waiting for the white smoke. I'm checking constantly. I might sleep here every night next week just to wait for that to come out so we can get ready for the schedule show. But, folks, it should be... Uh, coming out. So again, stay tuned. They're working hard on it here. Remember, all those games on FS1 and Fox, that's a lot of games. And that's why Big East basketball on Fox, well, there's nothing quite like it because you get to see it all on TV all season long. So they're making it work perfectly. They're putting together the great formula for you to be able to watch it all just two months away. Remember, go to at Big East MBB for all these great interviews, and we'll, we will keep you updated with any news and notes across the conference. But, folks, if it makes you feel happier, we had a media day meeting earlier this week. That's just over a month away. We're going to be live from the Garden again. And, again, College Hoops is two months from right now. Get those calendars out and get ready because Big East Hoops is just around the corner. See you next Thursday. Thanks for watching. Shoot around.